Hello everyone, welcome to Baijiu's IAS. Now in this series of Geography Through Map, today we are going to look at part third. And in the previous two parts, while our focus was on international relations, this part our focus would be on environment. Hopefully you would have gone through the previous two lectures and let's look at 10 more places in this third part of this special series. Now, the 21st place is Sambha Lake. You all would have heard about it. This is a lake which is in the state of Rajasthan on the western part of our country. In this state, this particular lake is the largest saltwater lake of India. Now, why was it news last year? Because thousands of migratory birds were found dead over here. One of the reasons for this was avian brutalism. Now, as you can see here, Two places Jaipur and Nagor are given because this lake is mostly in Nagor and Jaipur. At times it also touches Ajmer. You can see here. Having almost a catchment area of around 5700 kilometers. You can see this is very very important lake from our perspective. And the number of deaths are not important. It's taken from a newspaper clipping. But you can see around... 18,000 bird carcasses were found here last year. Let's move to the next 22nd and it's Amrabad Tiger Reserve. As you can see, it is near Hyderabad. This is the Tiger Reserve. Now, why was it news? Because last year, the Telangana State Assembly had passed a resolution protesting the proposed uranium mining that was to be done in this area. So you can see the Telangana State Assembly passed a resolution against a proposed uranium mining in this Amrabad Tiger Reserve located and now this you should remember Nalamala forest area of the state. So one more forest name we are coming. So this Tiger Reserve is in this particular forest area. Now, if we talk about this Tiger Reserve, it's almost around 2800 square kilometer and it is located between two districts of Mehboob Nagar and Nalgonda. And this makes it the largest Tiger Reserve in the country. Before the bifurcation of Andhra Pradesh, this whole was a part of Nagarjuna Sagar, Sir Salam tiger sanctuary but post division of the state of Andhra Pradesh the northern part is in Telangana and the southern part is in Andhra Pradesh and southern part still continues to be known as Nagarjuna Sagar Sea Salem tiger sanctuary so the northern part is the new one the Amrabad is there so do remember it so you can see earlier it was part of Nagarjuna Sagar Sea Salem Tiger Reserve. So let's move to the 23rd. Again, another Kuno Palpur Wildlife Sanctuary. And as you can see, this is here, Kuno, this place. It's in the northern part of present day Madhya Pradesh. And it is in news because of the cheetahs and because of a Supreme Court ruling. What is the ruling? What is with regards to cheetah? We all know cheetahs have become extinct in our country. So recently the Supreme Court had given its verdict that the cheetahs could be brought from Namibia in Africa and could be relocated in this Kuno Palpur Wildlife Sanctuary. So you can see Supreme Court has approved to bring in African cheetahs from Namibia and to relocate it in Kuno Wildlife Sanctuary. Now the thing is, it's a protected area. Now the thing is that India had a lot of cheetahs, but the last cheetahs, they became extinct very soon after our independence because of the hunting. And this Kuno Palpur area is one of the certain areas which have been chosen by an expert panel where these cheetahs could be relocated. So one of them was this, another for example, the Shahgar Baljin, Rajasthan was one. Then there was another Velavadar National Park in Gujarat was another. So these were certain areas which were chosen by the expert panel. But then finally the decision has been taken with regards to Kuno Palpur which is in Madhya Pradesh. And in 1981 had been designated as a wildlife sanctuary. Let's move to 
another one that's the green wall of india now what it is saying government is planning to create a 1400 kilometer long and 5 kilometer wide green belt from porbandar in gujarat to panipat in haryana so this is you can see the length wise it would be around 1400 kilometer width wise it would be 5 kilometer it would be covering the entire aravalli range and beyond and this green wall will act as a barrier for dust from west and will also check the eastward march of Aravlis. At the same time, it will check the desertification by restoring the degraded land through massive afforestation. So this massive afforestation would help to check the desertification also. Finally, this project is yet to get the formal note and details are still being worked out. So again, this is something that's uh, cutting from the newspaper, you can see it would act as a shield against the desert. Moving to the 25th, now this is Kajinsara Lake. Now you can see this is here, it is in Nepal. Why is it in news? It's in news because it is set to become world's highest lake. Now guys, the thing is, the previous highest lake was also in the same Manang district of Nepal. But this new lake, Kajinsara Lake, which has been discovered recently, is going to become the world's highest lake, replacing the Tilicho Lake, which was also located in the same district from the number one spot. So this lake is in news because of the fact that it would soon become world's highest lake. Let's move to point number 26. Now, last year, there was a lot of news about Amazon's rainforest fire. You can see this is the Amazon basin. And this basin last year was in news because of the fire that had engulfed this entire region. Now, last year, there were two major fires. One was here, another one was in Australia. So both the extremes, you could see these were there. Now, we have to remember that this burning was nothing new. This burning was, in fact, at its highest rate since 2013. Earlier also there used to be a lot of burning but then last year it was at its maximum. Another thing is very very important that this Amazon Basin, the largest area is of course in Brazil but then it's also there in the neighborhood countries. So it's shared by eight countries, Brazil being the number one. Of course Bolivia is there, that's number two you can see, Peru in the west, third, Ecuador, fourth, Colombia, 5th, Venezuela, 6th, Guyana, 7th, Suriname, 8th and also the overseas territory of French Guyana. So all these areas have their contribution as far as Amazon Basin is concerned but the biggest contribution is none other but Brazil's. Now a lot of things we know about this for example this is the largest rainforest in the entire world and it is covering almost 40% of South America. This is so big that is area wise it is 6.7 million square kilometers that's almost twice or more than that of the size of India. But then the biggest impact is who is ruling Brazil because of the fact that 60% of this is in Brazil and if the rulers or those who are the current political administrators of Brazil they try to stop this fire it would be better otherwise it keeps on going on like this but then we have to remember that Amazon basin is something that's a gift to the entire world and it is the lungs of the world so if this area suffers it creates a lot of issues for the whole world moving ahead Let's look at the 27th place. It's Puerto Williams in Chile. You can see Chile we saw just now. The last map, this Chile starts from here and continues till south on the coast of Pacific Ocean in South America. Now, Chile, here you can see again, this is the map in the southernmost Puerto Williams. It's a small town, but then it was in news last year. Why? Because it's a remote, as you can see, it's in the southernmost part. It's a remote hamlet in South American continent, which last year was upgraded to the status of being a city by the Chilean authorities and thus making it the southernmost town or the city of the entire world. And it has replaced 
Ushia, which used to be an Argentinian city. So just remember, this is the southernmost city of the entire world. So now moving to the 28th point, we come to Africa and we are talking about Danakil depression. You can see in the northern part here, this area, it's in Ethiopia. Now, why was Danakil depression? As the name suggests, it's a depression. That is, the area is below the seawater level. Why was it in news last year? Because the scientists have found out that this area is unfit to human population. For that matter, not only human population, but it is unfit for any active and naturally occurring life. And this is according to a study that was published in Nature Ecology and Evolution. So they are saying that this particular depression area is not fit for any active and naturally occurring life. So what is the reason for this? Why is this area not suited? There are two things. One, according to the report, here there are a lot of magnesium dominated brines that basically cause the cells to break down and another that this is having an environment which is having simultaneously a very low pH and high salt a combination that makes adaptation very very difficult now we have already seen it's in Ethiopia it's also one of the hottest place in the entire world along with one of the lowest around 100 meters below the sea level. So do remember this is something which is very very important was in news last year. So you can see so it's active and naturally occurring life cannot be sustained at this place. It's in northern eastern part you can see. This is north eastern part of Ethiopia, one of the world's hottest places as well as one of the lowest at about 100 meters below the sea level. Let's move to the point number 29 and now we come to Svalbard which is what fastest that we have to understand here. Now you can see Svalbard is an area in north Europe even in the northern parts of the countries like Norway, Sweden etc. Now basically, it's an archipelago in the northern part of Norway and this is the fastest heating place on earth. According to scientific estimates, since 1970, on an average 4 degrees Celsius rise in temperature has been discovered in this place which goes almost 7 degrees Celsius in the winters. And this is according to the Norwegian Center for Climate Services. And according to their projection, this place would have an increase in 7 to 10 degrees Celsius temperature by 2100. So let's look at this. So as I said, it's considered to be the fastest heating place on earth. And since 1970, average annual temperature has risen by 4 degrees Celsius with winter temperature rising almost by 7 degrees Celsius. And let's look at the 30th place and this is the Kangaroo Island. Now at the very beginning I had said when I was talking about the Amazon fire that there was one more fire last year which was in Australia and one of the examples of that is in Australia's Kangaroo Island. Now if you look at these two images 12th January 2020, 15 December 2019, that is within 28 days, how this Kangaroo Island has changed. You can see this greenery has been replaced by almost ash-like structure as far as this entire region is concerned. Now we have taken this island only because it's the third largest island of the Australian coast and in the last bushfire that happened, almost one third of the island has been charred. You can see the difference how this all place has been burned and this has resulted in massive fauna and flora's loss. So due to the recent Australian bushfire almost a third of this island has been charred. This is the third largest island of the Australian coast. So this was all about 10 places with regards to the environment special 
we'll come up with 10 more places with regards to or those who are related to environment in our next lecture for this lecture this much i hope you continue with this series you like this we'll keep on doing this till our prelims come that's all from this lecture goodbye thank you